Empire. Expediting the lines in the stadium. It's happening. Setup is is actually just uh, configuring these grab and grows and basically building perfectly natural flow so that the fans keep flowing and really never stop moving. Whereas you know, a belly up to the far stand is literally get to the front of the line, yeah. stop, wait, talk. That's Jack Hogan, Vice President of Strategic Partnerships at Mashkin, where streamlining the payment process helps the fans and stadium operations. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. So much technology is making the stadium experience have less and less friction. With baseball speeding up their games and others that have less stoppages, the need to get people back to their seats quickly is a priority. Our guest this week is Jack Hogan, who is the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships with Mashkin, which is a company that is the world's fastest self-checkout system powered by AI and computer vision. And they recently announced a partnership with Major League Baseball's San Francisco Giants and their home park. Hey, Jack, how are you? Doing great. How are you doing today? All right. Tell me a little bit, first of all, about the company and what you guys do. Yeah. So at Mashkin, uh, we developed the world's fastest, basically, self-checkout system. So uh, the way that it works is we use a setup of cameras and you just take your items and place them down on the pad and it's going to instantly ring up everything that you've had in your hands. So in a sports stadium, that looks usually like two beers, a hot dog and a pretzel. Um, And it's going to shave off, you know, minutes to hours off of your uh, off of your transaction experience. Okay, Uh, can we get technical about it? How does it do it? Well, so we use what we call computer vision, which is basically a setup of cameras that are able to see just like a human's able to see. So what we say is that if a human can tell the difference between products from about two feet away, the machine will be able to differentiate as well. So you could put a Coke and a Diet Coke, even though they're fairly similar, the machine will be able to differentiate them pretty easily and immediately. Okay. And then what do you have, like a connected payment system? Is that how it works to just keep moving along? Yeah, so we actually partner agnostically with payment systems because all of the venues that we work with will have different sponsorship, different uh, groups that are powering their payments. So essentially, you can plug any payment system into Mashin, and we'll run the payments through that um, those railways. So it allows us to basically float from stadium to stadium, even if they were to have, uh, say, one has a deal with Pfizer, one has a deal with Chase, one has a deal with you name the bank. Um, we try to be agnostic as far as payments go. Um, as you were looking into this technology or the company was looking into this technology, was the basis around entertainment and sports or, or was the initial idea behind all of this for something broader than that? Well, uh, you know, most overnight successes are not overnight successes. The company really started out in 2014. So for the first five years, it was essentially just us beating our heads against the wall, just developing this as a research project. Initially, it started with the cafeteria space. So think about like a corporate cafeteria and like a bank or something. Yeah. Um, you'd see about 50 to 100 items in that setup. So that was the initial strategy that we came to. When we evaluated sports stadiums, we saw, oh, wow, this is actually going to be a little bit easier because all the food is packaged. You're going to have between 20 and 35 items. So it made it an easy fit to dovetail into. So as you may know, all the people that run the world's largest corporate cafeterias also run stadium. Yeah. So you have your Aramark, your Levy, your Sodexo, your Compass Group. So these folks have a broad range. So that's how we started out by working with them, targeting cafeterias. It was a natural push for them to say, oh, this works in our cafeterias. It's very cool. Can we use this to speed up our places that have the longest and most uh, egregious lines, which is sports stadiums. Yeah. And um, when you look at the space themselves, so a cafeteria is one big open room, right? Um, this is a bunch of different, maybe they're all connected through Aramark or whoever, but a bunch of different connected little shops to buy different things. How does the setup work throughout the stadium? Do you have to kind of set it up in each separate place to make this work? Well, so one of the cool things about using computer vision is that we've built a giant database of computer vision images. So essentially when we go to launch a new stadium, we have almost no setup to do because we already know every single type of 24 ounce can of beer. 
right? We already have all that imaged and ready to go. Those are one of the more turnkey deployments. Huh. All that we need to do is image, say, their nachos, because everyone's nachos come in a different container. Image their hot dogs, because every stadium's hot dog comes in a slightly different wrapping. So basically what we'll do is we'll grab the menu from them. Uh, we can pull in all the data of the CPG items, as we call them, which would be a prepackaged beer and, uh, say, Skittles and Red Vines. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the hot food and that's where we spend probably an hour just setting up their hot food. And then from there, it's pretty much turnkey, flip it on and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Um, all right. So what is the data showing you about how much time is saved by fans that use this? Well, um, some examples that we've put out there is we did a case study with the, uh, ducks in Anaheim, right? Uh, so when we retrofitted one of their stands, they saw 400% throughput and sales improvement. Huh. So essentially we sped up their stand by about four X. Um, so we usually see our transactions at stadiums taking place in 14, 15, 16 seconds, depending on how many different loyalty apps the stadium have built in, right? Uh, if you're asking the season ticket holders to scan their ticket or scan their declining balance, then that'll add a little bit of time on there. But um, 15, 16, 17 seconds compared to a cashier, which is usually 50, 55 seconds will be your delta there on speed. And so the real, the real difference for the provider is the food needs to be ready outside of the prepackaged things like candies and things like that that are there. But if we're talking about hot dogs, hamburgers, French fries, whatever it may be, it should look more cafeteria style and it needs to be prepared and ready just for pickup, walk through pickup. Yeah, think about it as a mentality shift, right? So when we had COVID, everyone, or before COVID, we were used to bellying up to the stand, pointing at stuff and saying, I want two beers, two hot dogs. Then the person that's taking your order and bringing it into the cash cashier device is actually going to go fetch the items for you. Um, so what we've done is we've kind of tried to turn that system on its head. Let's let the fan walk by a hot rack and grab the items themselves and immediately flow directly to checkout. So that's going to shave off a massive amount of logistic time off of every transaction. So yes, they should have the food prepared. Uh, that's where most of the setup is, is actually just uh, configuring these grab and grows and basically building a perfectly natural flow so that the fans keep flowing and really never stop moving. Whereas, you know, a belly up to the bar stand is literally get to the front of the line, yeah. stop, wait, talk. Um, so we try to remove all that friction as best we can. Yeah, I guess the only thing, the only hang up, and this is not your problem, but it's the stadium's problems with alcohol. You can't just have anybody walk up and take it, right? Like, I mean, you're staring down legalities there. Yeah, so the way that we work with alcohol is essentially you'll see these large coolers. They're typically in the concept, right? So you're not going to see people just running up and uh, raiding them. <laughs> right. um, so the large coolers will be in the concept. Consumers will flow through, grab their beer. At the end of the concept, there'll be an attendant there to check their ID. Now, if it's an alcohol-only concept or one of our major like beer grab and goes, they'll actually check your ID at the entry point to the to the concept, and that'll allow for even more speed at the end. Yeah. Obviously, the person at the end to ensure whatever the legal alcohol rules are of the area. Some stadiums force you to crack the beer open. Um, there's always the two beer per person limit, so you need someone at the end of the concept, kind of regulating that, and also. The people at the end of the concept are there to make sure no one's getting overserved, right? You don't want someone who's falling down drunk yeah. uh, to be able to get more alcohol. Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. It's interesting. I went to, um, you know, we have two local baseball teams here, the Nationals and the Orioles. I went to a couple of Orioles games earlier um, in the summer. And, you know, what's really different about baseball now is the speed of the game. Um, things have really changed with the rules. And it is beyond noticeable that if you go up and get concessions now, the old traditional way, you are potentially likely to miss a full inning or more of a baseball game with what's happening now. So it feels like the time is right, certainly for that sport, um, because the action is moving a heck of a lot faster than it used to. 
Yeah, so the commercial times haven't changed, but man, the innings are flying. I was at the Giants game on Tuesday, uh, and I think the total game time when we won was two hours and 15 minutes, yeah. which is inane compared to the three and a half hour games that we used to have. Uh, so I grew up in the Bay Area. I've been going to those games my whole life, but they've been flying this year, which has been very interesting from a, a Mashin perspective because we really are focused on making sure that the fans can take in so much of the game that they've paid their hard-earned money to go see. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess I would assume that there is data opportunities as well. Um, I guess in the past, you always had everybody, you knew how many sales were made of merchandise, food, beer, whatever, but it feels like there's an opportunity here to be even more granular in terms of demographics of who likes what, right? Is that a possibility for teams to kind of learn about tastes and interests of their fans? Yeah, we're really starting to explore that at Mastin now, really trying to learn about what all the data that we've collected over the years is. Uh, we're doing over about a million transactions a day now um, throughout our entire fleet of machines. So that's something that's on, on the horizon for us. It's a little bit easier to see uh, using visual data what items are paired together in a basket because sometimes in a normal POS, something will just get rung in as beer, right? Yeah. Uh, even though best intention is to have everything uh, easily analyzable and slice and diceable, it just sometimes doesn't happen. So we do see it. We do see that a data play is coming down. Um, it's especially interesting for these teams because I mentioned their loyalty offerings. They often know customer by customer basis, right? Because it's their same season ticket holders that they've had for 25 years. Um, so the teams actually have a larger a larger opportunity with that data because we obviously don't access any personal or team data through our devices, but the data that's flowing in now will be much more uh, well tagged and easier to easier to use. Okay. Um, all right. So it's out there now. You have this you have this partnership with the Giants or other teams you're working with. Um, as it's being implemented, what are the teams asking for in terms of improvements as you move forward? What are they looking for? So one of the main things that comes up with the teams is actually something we touched on earlier, which is those payment partnerships that they have. So oftentimes they'll ask us to work with a different payment partner um, after our initial like uh, proof of concept. Um, with the with the Giants, it's been more uh, local, so they're looking for more localization for their fans. Um, so we've been working on that for them to make sure that we can take all of the edge cases for their season ticket holders and make sure that they're all getting their discounts on the automated devices. Yep. All right. Um, obviously, there's just a massive application for this in consumer products and shopping. Um, where Where's this going? I mean, I assume this is beyond the stadium for sure. Yeah, totally. So we, uh, we've we been rolling pretty aggressively through the convenience, fuel convenience industry. So we have a very large deal with um, Circle K. We have thousands of locations with them. So that's basically the place where you see it most applicable during your daily life. We're also looking to launch some other major um, C-store chains this year. Um, so that's kind of where we're targeting now. Obviously, there's upstream possibilities after we get uh, get that market um, saturated. So we will eventually look at, you know, a CVS, a Walgreens, uh, those type of convenience stores, uh, the, like pharmacy style ones. Yep. But our most, uh, most consistent traction right now is in the fuel petrol convenience industry. And last thing here for you, how competitive is, is this space? Are there a number of companies trying to do what you all are doing right now? Yeah. So as far as the computer vision space, there's massive applications to it, right? You've seen the guys from Amazon that are building cameras in the ceiling and making it so that uh, you can just walk around the store and pick stuff up. Um, our solution has been to basically compartmentalize and make something that's easily actionable and scalable right now. Um, so there are a few competitors popping up through the space, but we haven't really seen anyone get as much traction as we have, especially with our scale throughout the, the convenience industry. So like by the end of this month, we'll be in probably a hundred stadiums. Um, we're in thousands of convenience stores. Mm. Most of the other people are popping into the industry and trying to get that initial traction. So we'll see how the <laughs> market develops over the next, uh, next few years. But right now, the competition is pretty nascent. Jack Hogan is the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships with Mashkin. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. On the next Future Sport Podcast, we'll delve back into content generation in the gambling sector. 
bettors can actually be profitable on most of the sports on our platform by following the edges. Strike rate is not going to be as high, obviously, because more often than not, the edges are identified on the underdog. But as we all know, uh, of course, uh, the underdog story is often the most compelling. So um, over, the, over the course of each season, uh, most of our models have been profitable for a number of years now. That's Nick Slade, CCO of Cypher Sports Technology Group, where providing content for operators remains a necessity. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein.